Hi, I'm Michelle Jacobs, the Humane Educator here at Equine Advocates. And if you've been to our sanctuary, you may have noticed the various breeds of horses that we have here. Now, have you ever stopped to think about the many color variations and patterns that horses have? This makes each horse special and unique, just like you and I. I would like to take you on a little tour of our sanctuary and show you the many color variations we have here. Let's go take a look. This is Jasmine. She's considered a bay horse, and the reason she's considered a bay horse is because she has a reddish brown coat, two brown coat, and she has black mane, black tail, black legs, and black edges along her ears. If you see a horse that has a reddish brown to brown coat with black points, they are considered a bay horse. And there are many variations of bay. Now Kip is a light bay. The reason he's a light bay is because he's a lighter shade of brown with light colored eyes but he still has those black points black mane black legs black tail and black edges on the ears and this is a dark bay his name is cj now do you see the differences between a light bay and a dark bay he's a dark bay and not a black because he has those black points we talked about he has a black mane black points on his ears black legs and a black tail and a dark chocolate colored body. So he is a bay. This is Plato. Plato is a blood bay and the reason he's a blood bay is because he has a beautiful shade of deep blood red within his brown coat. And but he's still a bay because he has the black points, the black legs, black mane and tail and black tips on the ears. This is Arnold. Arnold is considered a chestnut. The reason he's considered a chestnut is because he has this beautiful base coat of red. It can vary in shades of red from light to dark, but what distinguishes them as a chestnut is if they had the red base body color and then a reddish color, either the same or light mane and tail. And this is Jeffrey Mack. Now Jeffrey Mack is a chestnut but he's a variation of chestnut. He's a flaxen chestnut. Reason for that is he has a beautiful flaxen mane and a flaxen tail, which is blonde colored. Isn't he gorgeous? And this is Millie. Millie is sorrel colored. And the reason she's sorrel colored is because she is copper colored from head to toe, including her mane and tail. And this is Sergeant York. Sergeant York is a black horse, and the reason he's a black horse is because he is black from head to toe with no other colors showing through. Being completely black is a unique color marking. Tyler is a gray horse. Now, a lot of people will think he's white. He's not white. He does have white fur, but a gray horse is considered a horse with white fur, but black skin underneath. Now, you can see with his muzzle that he has black skin. He has darker colored eyes, and that considers him to be a gray horse. A white horse is very rare, and a pure white horse has pink skin underneath, and that's the difference. And usually they have blue eyes, but they don't have to. And there are many variations of grays. Some are dappled gray, some are uh, flea-bitten grays, and you'll see some of those examples in a little bit. And this is Cece. Cece is a gray horse, but she's called a strawberry flea-bitten gray, and the reason she's called that is because she has these little spots of red showing through her white coat. That's considered strawberry flea bitten gray. I am with Hayden and Kachina, our two wild Mustangs. Now, they are classified as dun colored, and the reason they're classified as dun colored is because they have these primitive markings on their bodies. They have a dorsal stripe running from their withers all the way to their dock. So that's from the bottom of their neck all the way to, the, to their tail. And they also have these zebra-like stripes almost, patterning on their legs. So any horse that has these markings is considered dun colored. Now, there are various types of duns. There are red duns, there are blue duns, which is a black base coat. But these guys are the classic color, which they consider to be the ancient horse color of tan. They can vary from light colored to a darker tan. Kachina would be considered the classic colored dun. And it's also the most common color. And Hayden here is the coyote dun because he's a darker colored tan. And this is Mary Kate. 
Mary-Kate is considered a roan. She's considered a roan because she has evenly distributed white hairs throughout her body coat. There are various types of roan colors. She's, like I said, considered a roan because she has white hairs evenly distributed throughout, but she still has solid colored points on her legs, mane, and tail. This is Dallas. Dallas is an Appaloosa. Now, what's special about an Appaloosa is that it is classified as both a color and a breed. So he's very special. Appaloosas are characterized by spotted skin, stripes on their hooves, and they usually have a white base color with colored spots of all different shapes and sizes showing through. They don't have to be brown or chestnut colored. They could be black. They can be all sorts of different colors, but they have a white base color with color showing through, spots of color all over. Right? Right. And this is Bridget. Bridget is a pinto. Now the reason she's a pinto is because she has big white patches on her body. So any horse that has big white patches and another color is considered a pinto. We hope you enjoyed learning all about horse colors today. Now there are many color variations that we have not covered that we do not have here at our sanctuary. So many. We hope that you enjoyed learning about what we have here and how each coloration makes each horse special and unique and wonderful. Thanks for watching.